Hey guys, it's Whitney. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's really great to be back. I missed you guys so much. So for this first video, I've got some risers and about five little decor items for tiered trays and I'm really excited to show them. So let's jump in. Okay, for the first one here, I've got four signs from Dollar Tree. Now these are very similar to the large ones, but these ones were short. I just, I literally just got these a couple days ago, guys. So if you're watching this as this this comes out, run to your Dollar Tree and get a couple. I want to say they're about 12 inches long, and they're not made of that thick, heavier. If you guys know what I'm talking about, put it in the comments below. There's longer ones that are much, much heavier. Um, these are a particle wood or par uh, pressed board or MDF or whatever fancy name you can come up with. I, I'm not a wood person. But they're not actual like raw wood they're they're pressed board so basically I unpacked them i'm trying to pull off the paper on the front didn't come off too well so we're going to cover that later so what i'm doing is i'm going to grab my wood glue and i'm going to put just a tiny bit of hot glue in between that and that's just to hold them immediately so i'm going to show you how i actually assemble the tray this is going to be a tray by the way <laughs> um this is going to be a cute little riser. It's not necessarily going to be big enough for a tray. It's going to be a little riser for home decor. So you could put this next to a tiered tray. So I'm making a tray that's a riser or a riser that looks like a tray. Either or. Insert proper description here, whichever makes you happy, makes you smile. So I glued two together. So I have two sets of two and then here's my two sets of two going into the one all four are glued together mostly with wood glue because that's going to hold it these have a good amount of weight to them as well but not like those larger ones if you guys know which ones i'm talking about very popular from dollar tree so here is some i think they said 21 inch paint stir sticks from lowe's i had already cut the handle off of one of them because i was maybe needing it to use it like a shim in my garage but in any event, I had already opened it, so all I'm doing here is I'm going to add, as you can see my idea, I'm going to add these to the sides to make it look more kind of like a like a barn wood door almost. Um, and then that's what I'm going to attach our handles to. Wait till you guys see these handles are so cute. They're little farmhouse wood black handles. Oh, they're so cute. So here I have to cut this paint stick. All I did was place it underneath the tray that I glued together. Took a pencil, or actually I took a pen, just mark the uh, line where I need to cut them so that they're both about the same and then that's as you can see there that's what we're gonna do on each side so that little actually little tiny miter box and saw is in my Amazon shop it works amazing and it's so quick on paint sticks at least that's all I've used it for you guys are seeing it's maiden voyage right here <laughs> but I do I love it so it's in my Amazon shop if you uh, guys want to take a peek at that that'll be in the description below so I had a little bit of a rough edge, nothing horrible. One of them did splinter, but I think it looked really cute um, for that farmhouse feel. So just uh, take the ends, the raw edges, and I'm just kind of rubbing them on a, a higher grit sandpaper. I believe I got that pack at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store a while ago. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did when I was putting them together. Mostly wood glue and then dots of hot glue just to say, you know, to place it, to hold it in place immediately. Um, now after I did this you'll see me glue the other side I did put the clamps back on it and let it sit for probably maybe 30 minutes while I recorded something else one of the cute little quick things at the end but that was just to hold it down so once everything had cured you're looking at maybe I think I gave it maybe an hour while I was making some other things now it's time to paint it so that's my folk art uh, home decor chalk white white chalk paint it is very thick I'm not a very big fan of that folk art chalk paint. I really like the Waverly, uh, but I can't find that anymore. So I'll have to see if you guys have any suggestions of a different brand. I'm not really a fan of folk art. So I ended up doing two coats of this. You're going to see me do the one coat because I'm not going to have you painfully watch me dry it and then also come back to it and paint it again because that's just, that's just madness, guys. I mean, I know we're all mad here, but at the same time. Anywho, so I do uh, one coat, let it dry. I did do a second coat of the white just to, to make sure you could see some of the stroke marks. And then now I have to add, I got to paint the feet. And you know what, these guys, these are actually called bean pot candle cups. I got a 25 pack off of Amazon for $17.99 and that's actually a very good deal. It means they're, they're pretty inexpensive each. And I'm gonna use them as feet. I just think they're weird. They're, they're called, they're candle cups, but I'm gonna attach them on the bottom 
It's his feet. I've seen many people buy these and use them as riser feet, and I love it. So I bought myself a pack from Amazon. And if you guys want to see the same pack that I bought, it's also in my Amazon link under craft supplies. And that is in my description below. And I'll also pin it to the first comment. So here I am going to now distress or dry brush the tray and the feet. Um, I wanted to do black because it kind of gives me that, you know, old farmhousey, you know, almost the, you know, the, the chipped enamel look, but we're not going for chipped enamel. We're going for black and white farmhouse because obviously I'm still, you guys, the same, the same crafty, crafty thinker. I love farmhouse. I love distressed. I love it to look broken and worn and misshapen and chipped up and imperfect, imperfect. Everything has its imperfections and there's beauty in that in my opinion, but I, I love this, this style and I love dry brushing and I love distressing. So the more I do, or the further I go, I'm sorry, you're going to see me add a little bit more here and here. I tried to go a little bit light in the beginning and then you guys are going to see me take that across the street. I take it just a little bit too far <laughs> and then you'll see here, um, it's going pretty good. And now this is my preference. You guys stop when you feel you've gotten to the point you want. If you don't want to dry brush, if you don't want to distress, don't distress it. Or in fact, take some antique wax, like the Waverly Antique Wax, uh, the brown one, or any of the other waxes you can actually get. You can just rub those on with a cloth. You do not have to use the colors that I use. You could paint this uh, gray and then distress it with white. That's very popular. You guys are gonna see a riser set that I did that in later. Now here you'll see I'm getting a little bit heavier with the black paint in certain areas. So I'm not necessarily going in with a dry brush. You'll see me look like I'm almost uh, stippling or, or bouncing the, the brush heavily first and then swiping back and forth. And I love how I keep taking it out of frame here. You guys, sorry about that. First video back from having COVID. And uh, let me tell you, COVID really did whoop me. It took me out of, out of the game for a while, but I'm back in... This, this was fun. Every single one of these projects you're going to see in this video was so exciting. Oh, oh, and here, check this out. I picked up the brush and I said, okay, well, I wanted the lines to be visible, but they weren't anymore. So I wanted it to, that way I could get the barn wood look. So it does still sort of resemble a barn door or maybe even a barn, sh a, a barn window shutter, something that you would reclaim off of the farm. And that's what I was going for. So this made me happy here. So I was actually putting more of the definition back into the lines, especially those four pieces that we glued together. So I was able to see those lines and follow them. Had to wash my brush because I felt like I went a little bit too heavy on the black. So you're gonna see me go back over it here with the white and that's just gonna lighten up some of those chunky pieces that I just thought was a little bit too dark. Because again, I still want this to be a really light piece, good for spring. I mean, it's good year round, honestly. It just depends on what we're putting on it for the seasons. But I didn't want it to be so dark. So you see me distress that there. And now I am a happy crafter. And I gotta do the feet too, so. Uh, pick up the feet and I will put the black on the feet, but you're also gonna see me I didn't clean my brush again So we start out light you can always go darker But when I needed to add that white, I had to go clean that brush again So here we got the little candle or the bean pot candle cups. That's what they're called bean pot candle cups These are one five one and five sixteenths inch <laughs> one and five sixteenths So here I'm just adding the black paint to each one of those guys and now the magic we're gonna cover the back so remember we couldn't get those ugly papers off well they weren't ugly to begin with but I made them ugly by trying to rip them off so this is just a brown craft paper you can get it in the office or school supply section at the Dollar Tree and all I'm doing is taking a razor blade and I'm just cutting around it to cut the piece off so now we have a perfect exact match for the back of our riser tray and I originally thought that I was gonna do some fancy little uh, footwork not my own but riser tray footwork and oh no gotta plug in your glue gun Whitney <laughs> so uh, five minutes later I pick it up and here we go okay so my idea is glue down the middle and leave little corners open for the feet because we're gonna put the feet on the actual block not on the brown paper and then I'm thinking okay well the block is covered with paper once I get down here you'll see me pull, pull these corners back thinking I'm gonna get some sort of fancy like oh I'm gonna use my exacto knife and I'm gonna cut around it so that the, the paper will perfectly fit it it's the bottom of the tray Whitney calm down really so here's where I'm like you know let's just glue these feet 
Here's me thinking, if I cut around it, I can cut upwards and then find a way to tuck the, the paper around it so it looks... Yeah, no. Mm -mm. There we go. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Calm down, Whitney. It's the bottom of a tray. It's not going to get a lot of, you know, handle time. It's going to sit there and look cute. Kind of like me. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> anyway, so I decided glue all the paper down and then... Make sure that it's smooth, and it just gives you that really nice finished look. I love, I, don't, I like the behind the scenes to look nice. I don't want anyone to see, you know, the mechanics of everything. So now, wood and paper, it's all good together. I made this uh, a couple days ago, and everything is still holding up. I've gone in there, and I've kind of, I didn't try to rip them off or anything, but I have, you know, set it down a few times and moved it around and put stuff on it and all that, and it's... It's holding up fine, so the hot glue on the bottom of the paper is doing A-OK. -okay. But if you guys want to use a different adhesive or a different system, you guys go ahead and do that. Put your ideas down in the comments below. I would love to hear them, and we would all learn from them or share them and see what everybody likes to do. If you should do something like this or have, if you have in the past, please share, please share. And here you'll see, um, yeah, I got it a little crooked. So, of course, I cut it perfectly, but I got a little crooked. So, this right here is a finger sander. I love that little thing. Also in my Amazon shop under the tools. So if you guys want one, take a peek. I love that little sander. So I'm just sanding off the edge of the paper, giving it a really clean line for the bottom. There's my little vac, cleaning up my, my table. So moving on to our um, handles. Now I was searching for something. I just wanted farmhouse handles for cabinets or doors or something. And this is literally the first ones that came up and they were on Amazon. Six bucks for the pair. And I'm not mad at that at all. Because if any of you guys, if you keep trying, let me just put it this way. I was trying to go for as cheap as I possibly could just to see how cute and, and cute, you know, pretty I can make something with the most inexpensive items. That doesn't always work out. So, again, $3 each for these handles. These are a decent size. They're a good thickness. They are not flimsy at all. So, you know, sometimes you can get really cheap handles at, you know, the dollar store and they're going to bend the first time you use them. Or if you should accidentally drop this on its top, you're going to bend those handles and they're going to look horrible. These are good, thick metal. So here I am doing it the old fashioned way with an actual real screwdriver. But because those are paint sticks right underneath it, it just screwed right into the wood because that, you know, paint sticks are kind of soft. And see that? It's, it's perfect heavy duty. So it holds the whole thing. And there she is. Look how cute it is. I wanted it to look like a tray. Now, you guys, this is not a real tray because of how small it is, but it's a riser. It's a, tr it's a riser that looks like a farmhouse tray. And I am so proud of this and so excited about it. Tell me what you guys think. I love it. I love every... I'm getting goosebumps just here watching this while I'm <laughs> recording my voice to talk to you guys. I love this little tray. If I could make 15,000 more, I would. It is so cute. And then, of course, we would change the handles. We could change the feet. But on top of that, this will go for every season, no matter what you put on it. I, this is a new staple in my home, and I'm so happy I got to share it with you guys. So please tell me what you think below, and let's move on to our next set of trays. Um, I kind of had a, like a riser, riser fever. So these little, I guess, coasters, or no, they're, they, they're supposed to go on the wall. Take the tags off the back of everything, guys, of course. They're just supposed to go on the wall, I guess. The little tiny... Again, pressed board with a little paper thing on it. Got them at Dollar Tree, so I'm just kind of getting the uh, the edges off. And I'm going to add, these are 15 millimeter half wooden ball. Uh, I got a 300 piece bag for $9.59. So I have 300 of those, you guys. Now, had I known the tediousness of placing each one of these on. Now, you guys are going to see a little mini fail. And that's why I like showing you guys these things here, too. Um, I have seen many people do something similar to this, if not the same thing. Again, we're, none of us are doing anything that nobody has seen before. So in some ways, everybody uses everybody for inspiration. Please, by all means, take this and run with it. If you want to duplicate it, go for it, because it'll make you happy that you were able to duplicate something. I have no problem with that. I think, you know, what is that saying? Something is flattery copying is flattering i have no problem with that none of this stuff is new guys it's just ideas and we're here to share them with each other so i didn't actually measure i just started gluing them down and again i'm using that star adhesive that stuff is amazing so 
Problem is though, I did not measure. So you're gonna see me here. Now, I had used the accelerator, but it hadn't completely cured yet, but I did have to use pliers to rip those off. Now this video has been sped up about three times this fast, so it looked like I was popping them off pretty quick, but I did have to put a little bit of muscle into it because it, hasn't, it hadn't completely cured, but it was pretty dang close. So in any event, I had to put two on e one on each end, and then I got a ruler, and I had to find the middle. And from there, I could mark the middle instead of trying to guess again because my guess, my guesstimation was not good at all. And again, the end product looks absolutely amazing. It looks cute. It almost looks like stone. So the idea was to just go for something weathered and maybe even stucco. So I like that stone look. This was super just fun on top of the fact that my, my, my left hand, uh, my thumb and, and index finger were completely coated with uh, super glue but um, through the magic of files and picking and lava soap and constant constant filing I was able to get the glue off my fingers but also you know hey wear a glove I didn't <laughs> and also I'll let you know guys I did all this on both of those squares and I didn't mess up my nails at all that right there is uh, a triumph I will be signing autographs from 7 to 9 p.m. kidding 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 I got jokes but anyways this was a little tedious as you can see I don't believe I left it all in here but yeah you have to put that meat I'm using the medium thickness it's a medium thickness of the Starbond CA glue it's a super glue and then that seller accelerator is that spray aerosol can and that stuff turns it into an immediate hold and it's really amazing otherwise I'd have to sit there and wait for that to dry and I have no patience when it comes to crafting so anyways through the magic of editing now we're ready to put the feet on so you can see both pieces all four sides look how cute that is now I tell you if you get really close and you want to pull a, a ruler out you are going to see that they do not match but that's part of the imperfections that makes things look beautiful I got this little pack of feet right here at Walmart you can get these little finial knobs or finial pieces um, at any of the hardware stores and on Amazon. I have some in my Amazon store. That little pack per specifically that I'm using, I got from Walmart. Um, and I'm gonna use the larger of the feet. The, there's four small and four like larger. They're the same height, but one is thinner and one is thicker. So I'm just gonna stick with Starbond at this point and I'm gonna continue because it's working good for the wood, half those little half wooden beads, half wooden balls, they're not beads, half wooden ball, 15 millimeter, whatever. Um, it was working great for it, so I'm just going to continue with the wooden feet onto the back of the press board uh, little picture there and again, it's within seconds an immediate hold and it's holding things up You'll see me pick it up by its little feet just to test them out So I put my cat back on my glue make sure and I got one little guy done now. She is ready for painting so here's my other one make this one taller that is a classic Dollar Tree uh, candlestick had bought those I bought a case of them like two years ago because you know I couldn't find them in the store so I bought a case so I have 30 of them <laughs> so I don't know if I really won that fight <laughs> but anyway so I'm doing the whole e6000 and hot glue so the hot glue will give you your immediate hold and the e6000 will be the long-term permanent holds but because I have no patience as a crafter I have to do a little bit of both so I put the hot glue on there just to hold it while I'm trying to paint it and that E6000 has secured already and this piece is pretty solid it's not going anywhere now glass that is glass so don't drop it on the ground but uh, I needed to paint these guys immediately so those are done now we're gonna use mineral chalk paint from Waverly I still have a lot of it um, now you guys my little hiatus from crafting uh, my paints were not doing well I've had to shake a lot of them you guys have any tips on how to get your chalk paint bring it back to life because man they kind of settled and I hope I didn't ruin them like this one seemed good I shook I shook I shook it to, to death let me tell you I shook the hell out of it pardon my French <laughs> but I, I did I shook it really bad really well so I brought this one back but I have a white one and then you'll see well you guys saw earlier my black one that I used on the other tray that one was really chunky inside so I'm not I'm not sure if I've ruined them or not you guys let me know in the comments if you have ideas or if you've experienced that so here you just see me placing a coat of the Waverly mineral 
chalk paint. I had to do two coats on both. I'm not going to have you watch me do the two coats. This is just a preliminary one coat of each. And that's what they look like after two coats. You can still sort of see the design on the top, but after we dry brush this, you won't. I, th I think this is the most exciting part for me. I love it. I think things come alive as soon as you do this distress look, this dry brushing. If this is the style that ever goes out, I'm going to be that person who hang... Once again, painting off camera, Whitney. Come on. <laughs> I got way too excited, guys. <laughs> it's back to crafting. Um, I'm probably going to hold on to this longer than I probably should. So once this ever... If this ever goes out of style, and when it does, eventually things all change, I will still be doing this. So I'm going to be that boring or the, the uh, crazy YouTuber crafter decorator with, you know... You could say outdated techniques if you want, but I love it. I, it. It's actually exciting to me to watch these things come alive as soon as you just dust them with a little bit of a contrasting color. I just, I love this gray with the white look. It's beautiful to me. I absolutely love it. What do you guys like? Do you guys have a specific one? Are you guys with, you know, the white with the antique or black with white? I personally love this gray with the white. You guys tell me. You tell me what your preferences are. So these two girls are cute. Look at now they're done. I love that. The candlestick won't chip. Um, it's got a thick coat on there, but look how great they look together. Those beads aren't coming off. They are a permanent fixture. I was thinking of adding, um, what is that, baking soda to the paint to make it look more thick and like it was made of stone or stucco, but I didn't. So my next idea, let's see. I'll find something I can do that too because that'll be the first time. I've seen other people do it. But I have never tried it myself, so you guys let me know if you have tried it. I think it would look really good, kind of like, you know, built up in between all those beads so it looks like it's been weathered and sitting somewhere for a long time. But um, I love these girls the way they are. They're so pretty. And those two little arrangements you guys are going to see at the, at the end of the video, those went by so fast. Those are quick and easy. Now this one, let's see. Technically, $5 target spot. These are two risers. They're already built. I don't even know if you can count this as a DIY. I have something <laughs> I have something else at the end too that I don't know if it really counts, but technically I changed it and I altered it, so it's a di I, and I did it myself. So I could say it's a DIY, but in any event, it's home decor. It made me happy. So just do what makes you happy, guys. Nobody has to live by any definitions, right? Cuz we have enough to live up to, so who cares, right? So and in any event, here's me making an excuse. All I did was dry brush these guys. I just added the white dry brush to the sides, to the feet, and the top. And on one of them, I think I got a little bit happy and tried to do the bottom of it, which they're so low to the table that I don't believe you would ever see the bottom of them, but I might have just gotten a little chalk paint happy and just kind of tried to go at it, but you'll see in a second. Um, both of these look so much, they look completely different just with a little bit, you know, it's like, what am I doing with the bottom here, Whitney? <laughs> they look completely different just with a little bit of uh, white paint. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Look at that. There's some more arrangements, you guys. Again, I don't think they count as DIYs, but really fast and easy. But look at, I stack these for space where I take my pictures out in the garage where my studio lights are. But they are so simple, but perfect. So if you guys see anything pre-packaged, just grab it, bring it home, and you can just take a little bit of something and change it and make it yours. So cute. Absolutely cute. And here you can kind of tuck them together because one is way lower than the other. Either stack them or tuck them together. Okay, next one. This one right here got a story. So that is a watering crayon from Hobby Lobby. These are bell flowers from Hobby Lobby. I've got some buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree and some random uh, star from I have left over. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just wrap the buffalo check around the watering can, and that is it. No bows, no nothing. I'm just putting detail around the watering can to make it my own. I am still hopelessly and utterly obsessed and devoted to buffalo check. I love it with a passion. In fact, uh, COVID had me on my sofa for literally over a month, and I decided I hated my sofa, and we bought new furniture for the living room about a couple weeks ago. And I have buffalo check. I have a buffalo, black and white buffalo check chair, and then accent pillows for my sofa. You guys have to see this. Um, I, I love it. I see it every day of my life now. It's 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 a uh, universal style for me now. Buffalo check everywhere. So, anyways, added that ribbon to it. 
little story behind this. I was at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. Now all these, I, all this stuff I bought a while ago, that little can and those flowers, you can still get them today. Those flowers, those bell flowers are in the wedding section where you would make like corsages and boutonnieres and things. But uh, this was during Easter, probably 2019. Look how cute that is with just some ribbon on it. Here, cut this piece to fit. And then I sh I'll shimmy some, some of the pieces I cut off in there to make it solid. But uh, I went to Hobby Lobby and I saw something like exactly like this pre-made and they wanted like $10 for it. And I said, okay, well, they must be on some sort of uh, altered state of mind thinking someone's going to pay 10 And it was smaller and not as cute. $10. So again, that watering can, the price on it said $2.49 on the bottom. I guarantee you I did not buy it for $2.49 or $2.40, whatever. Whatever. I uh, guarantee you didn't buy it. And each one of those flower stems are 99 cents retail. So looking at $5.50 already just for those two. So that's half of it. But I guarantee you I did not buy those for that price. I never buy anything from Hobby Lobby full price. But anyways, at the end of this, this is so stinking cute. I can't get over. I have I love these little flowers. This is like a very Eastery, springtime, happy little thing that... I was looking at and I was like thinking about giving it to my mom because my mom loves these types of things for spring and Easter, you know, the, the beginning of the year when the flowers are coming out. She loves this stuff. So I'm going to add some uh, Dollar Tree uh, Spanish moss to the top of it so you can't see any of that styrofoam. And then also it makes it look as if our bellflowers are just growing right out of, uh, right out of the ground. And that the, we planted these bulbs in the, are they bulbs? You guys let me know. Bellflowers grow from bulbs. I think they're bulbs, like tulips and stuff. Any of it. It makes it look like they're growing right out of this water can because we placed them there because all of this is real. <laughs> but anyways, um, given my um, Spanish moss a little haircut here, and all we're, I mean, we're, we're more than, we're more than done, guys. Almost, all I'm going to do is cut off about an inch. Well, that's more than an inch. I'm going to cut off about almost an inch and a half off of the bottom of each one of these, and I'm going to put them all the base is towards each other so it all looks like it's growing out of the middle of the can you'll see in a second you're gonna see that Spanish moss which I love the accent I love what it adds to it so you guys are gonna see that in a second so I'm just kind of arranging the, the green leaves and pulling them out so that they kind of surround the outside of it so it looks like one big little plant of bell flowers they're so cute but look at that all that for five bucks and they wanted me to buy one smaller and less cute for ten dollars no thank you so that was my own little victory right there but i love it and i i would leave that out year round too even though i know you guys i don't tend to subscribe to rules of what time of year things bloom anyways so here's the next one these ones are going pretty fast i know so i'm using some of the mo the spanish moss i had out from that previous one that is a dollar spot target bundle from a year or two ago. Now that is a little milk glass. It's a uh, vintage milk bottle or milk bottles. I got a nine pack, a 16 ounce nine pack from uh, Amazon for 20 bucks. So it ends up being about $2 and 30 some cents each. So it was like 19 something. I'm putting that Spanish moss in the bottom of it. I took the lid off. We don't need the lid obviously. So I'm putting Spanish moss in the bottom. I'm not filling it with rocks. I'm not putting styrofoam. I'm not putting spray foam. I'm just putting some moss in the bottom and that's just to hide the bottom of the stems because I like the way that looks. So we're going to clean up that moss mess because I have issues with a messy station. And this is a heavy uh, glass, guys. This is a heavy glass milk bottle. It's not like it's a thin little thing. It's got good weight to it and it's so vintage and so classic and I love things like this. This is very... Again, I hate using the word farmhouse so much because, again, I don't live in a farmhouse. I live in the city, but I love this stuff. It's almost uh, reminiscent of back in the day when they actually delivered milk bottles to people's houses in the, I want to say the 50s. I don't know. It, it makes, it's reminiscent of simpler times, and it, I love the way it looks. So, again, I'm going a little ham with this uh, buffalo check, but that's me, and this is for my house, and it makes me happy. So I literally just tied it in a knot. I just tied it in a square knot. Left over right, right over left. And you have a square knot that won't come out. You got your moss in there. And then now I'm putting my stems in. Now you'll see here, stems are a little bit too long because you get too much space at the top. I'm leaving, I'm choosing to leave these flowers bundled because I like the raffia bow that came on them. And also you can change these out if you want to for a different color or a different theme or a different season. So I'm just going to take about an inch off of the bottom of each one of those stems, put them back in the bottle. 
and you're going to see me pull on a couple of them. So I'm pushing some down and pulling some up. You can't see any of the bottoms of them because we have all that cute Spanish moss in the bottom of the bottle to hide that. So here is, again, less than five minutes, a very simple little filler tray idea, and I love it. We didn't have to paint anything. We didn't use any glue. Look how cute she is. Love it. And it is a decent, good size glass. It is a decent, heavy milk bottle glass, and I love it. And this girl here, even easier. I cannot remember where I got that glass from, guys. It's either Dollar Tree or Dollar Spot. Target. I don't know. Those are Target Dollar Spot flowers from last spring, and those are little green wreaths I got around Christmas time. Um, just taking the tags off of them. We're not using any glue. We're not using any ribbon. We are taking the tags off. And then I'm going to take off the little hangers on these green wreaths. Um, again, they look like boxwood to me. But again, boxwood is so popular that it's, year, it's a year-round thing anyways, right? So I'm just going to stack the three together because quite honestly, individually, they're a little thin, a little sparse. So I stack the three wreaths, put in my three stems or my three bundles. Again, and I left those bundled together and it's done. Look at that. That's how fast that is. We didn't have to use glue, no cutting, no nothing. Just take the labels and the tags off and throw it together. Look how cute. Even faster. We got a little tiny cup from the spring shop at Hobby Lobby. I got some honeycomb ribbon from Dollar Tree a while ago. And these right here are cute little honey dipper sticks. I got a 20 pack of those. They're three inch mini honey sticks from Amazon. $6.95 for 20 of them, guys. That's kind of awesome. And also, I'm not really doing much to it. I just literally took it out of the bag and I'm going to stick it in the cup. And like I did earlier on our one of the previous ones you saw, I'm just going to glue this ribbon around the cup. Now, it's hot glue, but it's not permanent. If you choose to change the ribbon for the season, you can. This little tiny cup is the perfect little size for a tear tray. This is definitely, I don't even know, I don't think it's functional. I got it at Hobby Lobby but I'm pretty sure I got it in the decorative section. I don't think I got it in their kitchen area, but um, it might be for espresso. I don't know. But anyways, I'm using it for decoration. I don't care. <laughs> but it is the cutest little tiny coffee cup I've ever seen. And don't you guys, at Christmas, you could put like, make little fake marshmallows or something. I, anyways, that's it. Glue it around. I made a little hem out of it, glue it around, and there you go. So now you got some cute little honeycomb idea for lemon, and I, I love that. I love that. That's fast too. And it's it's interchangeable. And the last but not least fastest one. This is from Valentine's the year before last year. Not this not this year, 2021. I got that at at uh, Target. And I like the little succulent. I got some lemon ribbon here from Dollar Tree. Same thing. All I'm doing is I'm going to cover up the little design on the front. The design on the front has a heart in it. Um, I like hearts, but I'm not that wild about them outside of Valentine's Day. So I wanted to make this cute and interchangeable for summer, spring and summer. So I got my lemon ribbon. Again, if you don't, if you want to change it, we can pull that off because I'm using a minimal amount of glue on the back. So you can see me burn my little finger. Actually, I think I did that on the other one. But anyways, that's it. We tied it around. See the little, the little seam I made? And there, it completely changes it. I love this, guys. I had so much fun making all of these cute little things. Look how cute the lemon ribbon with the honey. It's like lemon and honey. It's perfect for iced tea. It's perfect for summer. Just makes me so happy. So here's here's the final reveal, you could say, I guess. Or uh, I just decided to to use my my phone and try to record something a little bit different. You guys tell me what you what you think instead of the pictures. You let me know if you like this. I loved every second of making these items for you, for you, for, well, for myself, but for you guys too. This was so much fun. I couldn't stop smiling. And, you know, with the bad start to the year I had, my husband had COVID first. And then, of course, I caught it from him because I'm not going to abandon my husband when he's sick. And it's just, it took a lot out of me to get back into the swing of things. And, you know, things happen to all of us. For any of you that are going through it now or have been through it, I'm here for you. Uh, I feel for you. And if there's anything that we can do for each other, it's just be here for each other in the comments. Everybody here has always been a great community. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I cannot wait to make more. I have so much more planned. Just wait. I've got more. I've got some Easter and spring stuff in the in the works, and I can't wait, you guys. Thank you so much for waiting for me and hanging in there for me. And that's it. Those those are those are the things we we did today. 
thank you so much you guys um remember subscribe like comment um i have a coffee page for donations i also have a amazon shop um, all the links are in my description below do with it what you like not required but always appreciated so thanks guys i love you take care take care of each other you do a good job of that and until then happy crafting and i'll see you guys in the next video bye, -bye.